What's going on guys, Brandon Kyosef here with Kyosef Trading and in this video, real quickly we're going to go over the easiest way to use a raise in PineScript. I know a raise can be a bit intimidating and when you click on someone's public script and you see they're using a raise, it quickly becomes arduous to decipher exactly what they're coding and a raise can very quickly become your worst enemy. Now, now this video is intended to kickstart your journey towards coding arrays in PineScript. And to be fair, once you understand the rudimentary structures and concepts associated with arrays in PineScript, you'll see that they're not too difficult to use. The primary issue is simply learning how to put values in an array, take values out of an array, and understand how size of an array must be accounted for when putting values or taking values out of the array. An array consists of indexes, and those indexes are appended data points. We're going to look at some examples of what all this means. I know it might sound confusing. Don't worry, we're not going to use textbook verbiage throughout this video. I'm going to try to explain arrays practically and in a simple, easy to understand way. So let's get started. Now, I went ahead and plotted some random data on the chart. Uh, this data has absolutely no utility whatsoever. Completely random. However, this data that we see on the chart here, we can think of this list of numbers as data that the Pine engine is calculating and accounting for as it runs through the bar set and performs your coding functions, your calculations, etc., that you use in Pine Editor. So I'm going to go ahead and use bar replay here, and we can see that this data is constantly changing. We can think that this is exactly what the Pine engine is doing as it's running through all these bars taking your calculations, performing them, pulling the data that you're requesting, etc. Now, the Pine Engine knows exactly what to do with this data, right? Values are being stored, calculated, PineScript is accounting for what you're telling it to do in your code. However, now all we're doing with an array is telling the Pine Engine, hey, out of all these values that you're accounting for as you run through the bar set, I want you to take X number of particular values and put it here in this array we can think of the array as a box. I want you to take some of this data, put it in this box. That way I'll have personal access to the to this data that I'm requesting from you and I can run calculations with it. I can evaluate the data, etc. Now, if we don't tell PineScript to take all this data that it's running through and that it's calculating for and put it in this array, we're going to have trouble telling our computer, "Hey, this is the data that I want you to take." and run my calculations with. Because of course, we can think of the computer as accounting for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of data points. So we need to tell our computer, hey, when you come across this data point or that data point or this series of data points and the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of data points that you are calculating through this bar set, I need you to take these particular data points, put them in this array so I can run more calculations with them, and I can obligate you to perform more fancy complex tricks with this data. Because once the data is in the array, we can think of the Pine Engine doesn't have to search through tens and hundreds of thousands of data points to find the data that you're looking for. It's all compiled right here in this array. Additionally, for the tens and hundreds of thousands of data points here, again, it becomes difficult to tell PineScript, hey, PineScript, out of these hundreds of thousands of data points, I want you to look back at data point number 77,000 and I want you to perform this calculation. Of course, there's more textbook verbiage and ways to explain how to use an array, but I am trying to explain it in a way that we can easily grasp in a way that will sort of enlighten us to the fundamental functions of an array and how we can incorporate them into our scripts to build more complex algorithms or trading indicators. Now for this video, we're not going to do anything fancy at all. We are going to learn the easiest way to learn arrays in PineScript. This easy method to use arrays will help you better understand how arrays operate and how you can put data into an array, take data out of an array, and how you have to account for additional conditions when coding with arrays in PineScript. It's not as easy as not using arrays in PineScript, but once you do learn how to use arrays, Hopefully you'll have that, that moment where everything just clicks and you're like, whoa, I can do so much more with PineScript now in a much easier and, and quick way than I could before I learned how to use arrays. So let's learn the easiest way to use arrays. Now, the easiest way to use arrays, to my perspective at least, is to simply plot labels with them. 
It's not a difficult thing to do, just takes a few extra steps, but it'll help you understand, better understand how you can incorporate arrays into your scripts. So to start, we're going to go to our indicator function, which is line number five for this script. And we are going to set overlay to true. This simply means that we're going to plot data on the chart instead of in its own pane. We're going to plot labels on the chart for this script. We'll go ahead and delete plot close. And let's quickly revisit how we plot labels on the chart without using an array. So we'll go ahead and create an identifier and we will use the keyword there and the keyword label and we will create our identifier name. Of course, this can be absolutely anything. So we will just call this underscore label and underscore label equals NA. It has no value as of right now. It will not have value until we assign it a value when some condition is met. Now, we have our identifier. It is going to take on the label variable. So for this example, we're just going to plot the close price of the asset in a label. So we're going to say if bar index underscore label, that's our variable, is taking on a new value, no longer NA. Now I have gone over exactly what the bar index variable means, what an if statement is, what our colon equal sign does in earlier videos on this YouTube channel. If you are having trouble following along, I would suggest watching those earlier videos on this YouTube channel to understand these pine script techniques. For those of you that are following along, we are going to append a value to our identifier here. And we are going to say underscore label equals label dot new. And we will plot this label at the current bar index that will be our x-axis plot. Our y-axis plot will be the high of the session. And our text will be str.toString close price. We'll go ahead and close off our parentheses here. And now we have a label.new function coded in PineScript. Again, we've gone over this extensively in earlier videos on this YouTube channel. So be sure to check those out if this part of the video is not making much sense. So let's go ahead and plot our script here and we can see, hey, we are getting labels with the closing price values on them and we're getting quite a bit. And this is sort of excessively populating the chart. We can't really distinguish what, what the labels say, maybe a few of them. And this is important, of course, because now we're going to review how to delete a label once it's been plotted. And simply all we would do is use the label.delete function. So we will say label.delete underscore label brackets one. Again, using brackets and a number to the right of a variable, all we're telling PineScript is, hey, access the value before the current value. So for instance, the most current label that we have plotted on the chart with the close price, we can think of this as label number 50 because we have 50 labels on the chart here. So this is label number 50. So when I say label.delete underscore label brackets one, I'm saying, hey, delete the label before label number 50, which is label number 49. In this instance, label number 50 will remain on the chart. Label 49 will be deleted. However, in our if statement, we used if bar index. This means every time the bar index changes, essentially a change in the bar index. So essentially on a tick by tick basis. So each time a new label populates the chart, if there is a previous label, it will be deleted. That's all we're saying with this label.delete function. So let's go ahead and add this to the chart. And we can see here now that as soon as a new label is created, if there was a label before it, it will be deleted. End result, we are left with one label on the chart at all times, and it's going to plot the close price of the bar that is being calculated or the last bar in the bar set at the time. So if we go ahead and click play here, we can see the close price is constantly changing by the bar and all previous labels are deleted up until the most recently plotted label. And of course, if I were to not use the brackets one here, which is just telling PineScript to access a historical value of the variable, and we hit add to chart, right? We're gonna get no labels on the chart because we're telling PineScript to create a label, and, but we're also telling PineScript to delete the most immediately created label because we're not telling it to access the previous label anymore. However, what is important to say, however, it is important to say here that on the very first bar in the bar set, there is not going to be a bar before the first bar in the bar set. Consequently, there's not going to be a historical label before the first bar in the bar set. 
Now, keep in mind, we're telling PineScript to delete, and we'll go ahead and put our brackets back here once more. We are telling PineScript on every tick, on every bar change, delete the previous label of our label variable here. Now, on the first bar, we're, the script will populate a label, and we're telling PineScript to delete the label before, but there is not a label before for PineScript to delete. In this instance, it's okay. PineScript will check to see if there was a label before the current label. It will ascertain that there is not a label before the current label, and it just won't do anything at all. And then on the second bar, right, we'll populate another label. PineScript will check to see if there was a label before the most currently plotted label here that will be here, and then it will delete that label. Now, this will become an issue with arrays. In some instances, if we try to tell PineScript to do something with the data in an array, but the data in that array does not exist, we will run into errors. Not with all array functions, but when we are telling PineScript in most instances to go in an array and do something with the data, and that data is not there, or there's nothing in the array, we'll encounter errors and the script will not run. Now, without using an array, that's okay. PineScript We'll look to see if the data is there that we're telling it that we're telling it to delete. If it's not there, it won't do anything. We'll move on. With an array, this will be an issue. Let's go ahead, and we are actually going to introduce the array function, and we're finally going to use it. And this is the easiest way to use arrays. And I highly suggest that with any script you're coding, if you're using labels or lines, you can use this exact practice with lines. If you're using labels or lines, use them with arrays. Don't plot them without arrays. Of course, the good thing about labels and lines is they're on the chart. You can verify that they're working correctly. So it will be easily perceptible if a line or label is not plotting correctly. And if that's the case, then you go into your array and you debug until the desired end result is achieved. So from now on, if you're serious about coding arrays in PineScript with any lines and labels that you code, make sure they're being put into an array pulled out of an array, deleted in an array. It's the best way to get comfortable with arrays. So let's go ahead and do just that. So we'll go ahead and create another variable here. And instead of doing var label, label equals array dot new label, we're going to do var label, left bracket, right bracket. Now, of course, when we put a number inside left bracket, right bracket, we're telling PineScript to access historical values in the bar set. However, when we're declaring or creating a variable here and we put left bracket, right bracket with no integer between the brackets, we are telling PineScript that we are creating an array variable. So we're going to say var label left bracket, right bracket equals array dot new underscore label left parentheses. Let's go ahead and look at our arguments here. So the explanation for this built in function, the function creates a new array object of label type elements. Essentially, all we're doing here is we created an array. It has absolutely no data in it right now, but it will be able to hold and be appended label type elements. This means we can't put anything in this array that isn't a label. We can't put integers, lines, float numbers, anything that's not a label will not go in this array. Now, if we look at the first argument here, and unfortunately, when I move my mouse, our little explanation box will move. So let's go ahead and pull up the comprehensive explanation box and we can see that array.newLabel takes two arguments, size, series integer, initial size of the array, optional, the default is zero, or initial value, the initial value of all elements in the array, the default value is NA. Now, when you're using lines and labels, for the most part, you will not have to predefine the size of the array, and very rarely are you going to set an initial value. In fact, in most instances, even when I code arrays, it's not too often that I have to predefine the size of an array or the values that are in the array. Generally, you will predefine the size of, of an array when you know the total quantity of elements that you want to be stored in the array. If you do not know beforehand the total quantity of elements that you want in an array, then you're unlikely to set the size of the array. Now, an array in PineScript can hold up to 100,000 elements. So even if you put one element in the array per bar, at most you're getting 21 to 22,000 bars on the chart. So you will not exceed the size restrictions that are imposed by TradingView for an array. An initial value 
Again, all that's going to do is every value in the array is going to begin with a value. So if we're creating an integer array, let's say I make the size 100 and I say the initial value is one. As soon as the array is created, while well, the Pine Engine is executing its calculations, an array with 100 values is going to be created and all 100 of those values are going to be one. Consequently, that also means that there will be 100 indexes in the array and we'll go over that here shortly. So we have our array, it has no values and it has an undetermined sign, completely mysterious. No one knows the size of this array yet. Now let's go ahead and append a label value to this array. And we're going to do exactly what we did when we created a label that was not stored in an array. So I'll go ahead and ghost code our label.delete line. And we're still gonna operate out of the if bar index statement right here. So if bar index, instead of saying label.new, all we're going to do is say array.push, okay? Now, let's go ahead and look at these arguments. The function appends value to an array. Remember at the beginning of this video, we discussed how once we learn how to tell the computer how to put values in an array, put data in an array, and how to access data in that array or even take data out of the array, once all of that sort of clicks and we can do that with fluidity, we'll be coding arrays all over our script. You can go ahead and post them publicly. Everyone's gonna be like, wow, these scripts look great. This person really knows their stuff. So, so if we go ahead and look at the argument for array.push, this function appends a value to an array. It wants an ID that's just gonna be the array and it wants a value. So ID is any array type in array object. Sounds confusing. All it is, is we're just, when we use this function, the very first argument we put is the array that we wanna put data inside of. That's the most basic way to explain it. And then value, okay? The value of the element added to the end of the array. Again, that just sounds so much more confusing than it has to be. That's just the data that we're gonna put in the array. So literally with array.push, we have one array on the chart. We haven't even named it yet, unfortunately. So we'll go ahead and call this all caps label array. Fair label, the array operator, all capitals label array equals array.new label. So array.push, what is the ID of our array? The ID of our array is a label array. So essentially we're telling PineScript, hey, I wanna put data in this array that I created called label array. We go ahead and put our comma. Now PineScript is going to respond and ask us, okay, what do you wanna put in this array? Now again, we have to put a label in this array. That's, those are the only values that this array will hold. If I try to put zero into the array, let's go ahead and add this to the chart. We're gonna get a bug down here. Add to chart, operation failed incompatible type series label and literal integer. I cannot put a number in the array. That has not been converted to a string. So we're gonna have to put a label and quite literally, we can just copy this label.new function that we have here and paste it as our second argument. Let's go ahead and ghost code this. So array.push, we're telling PineScript, we wanna put a value in an array. PineScript asks us for the first argument, which array do you want to put a value in? We only have one array right now. It's a label array. So now we're telling PineScript, we want to put a value in the array titled label array, comma. PineScript then asks, okay, what's the value? And the value is a new label, okay? And then the label, of course, hosts its own arguments that I'm sure you're familiar with by now. So let's go ahead and add this to the chart and boom. We can see right away we get the same result as we did before we started deleting arrays earlier in this video. We're plotting labels at the high price for the close of the bar that is being calculated. So with just one or two lines of code, we used arrays to plot a label on the chart. And if you are not concerned with deleting labels, let's say for instance you're on the 15 minute chart and you want to plot a label every time there's a day change, you might not have to delete labels. So this is sufficient in itself already. However, in this case, we're still gonna learn how we can delete labels out of an array because it's important because we must understand how to take data out of an array and how to tell the computer how to get inside of an array and do stuff with the data. That's all we're doing here. So we're also going to say on this next line, if bar index array dot push a label array, we put the label into the array. Now let's, let's go ahead and try label.delete and we're going to say label.delete label array. Okay. Now this array, it's of the label type. So it only takes label data and there's a label in it. 
So we're going to say label.delete label array and let's see what happens. Now we get an error. Cannot call label.delete with argument label array, an argument of array label. That's pretty much what that's saying was used, but a series label is expected. Now let's go ahead and hover over our hypothetical array that we had here, but was unfortunately deleted, it seems. Okay, so here's our array and it has many, many labels in it. Uh, we'll go ahead and put label one and we'll put period, period, period for now. So we have 50 label values in our array currently. Now, the name of this array that's hosting all this data is called label array. So when we use that label.delete function, even though that works for a variable that is not an array that is appended a label value, even though it works, when we tell PineScript, hey, delete label array, right, we can think of PineScript, it's doing all its calculations, and then, okay, I'm going to delete label array, and what well, you're just telling me to delete an array, this isn't going to work. Instead, you need to tell me the data in the array that you want to delete, not the array itself. So because this isn't going to work, PineScript is not through the label.delete function, we cannot delete an array, even though it's holding label type elements. So what we're going to have to do is use a function that tells PineScript to go inside the array and then delete a value in it. So we're still going to use label.delete, but we're also going to use array.shift, left parentheses. And we'll go ahead and close off our parentheses here. Let's go ahead and look at the arguments. The function removes an array's first element and returns its value. All it needs is an ID. We go ahead and put our ID of label array. Now this line of code right here, we're quite literally telling PineScript, hey PineScript, go inside the array, access the very first element in that array, and then label.delete it. So it's going to be a label and then delete it. We're using label.delete in this instance because there are label values inside this array. Now let's go over array.shift here just a bit because it can sound a little confusing. It might not be easy to grasp intuitively. So this function removes an array's first element and returns its value. Now let's say in our array, let's say we have no values in the array again. Now, when we do array.push, and let's pretend that we're putting integers instead of labels. Let's say we array.push zero. Okay, there's no elements in the array. Now, when we push the zero value into the array, cool, we'll have one value in the array. Now, let's say we push another value in the array. That value is going to be considered the last value in the array. That value will be pushed in sequential order. So, let's say we push one into the array, right? The first value in the array is going to remain zero. The second value is now one. And as the array grows, this zero will remain the first value in the array and one will remain the second value. So as our array grows, the placement of value zero and value one in the array does not change. So value zero, of course, is the first value in array. This is going to be at index number zero. We'll discuss indexes in arrays in another video. So value zero is an index zero. Value one is an index one. However, do not be confused because let's say I put one as the first element in the array and zero as the second element. Well, value one is going to now be an index zero. Value zero will now be an index one. Value two is an index two. So when we say array.shift, we are telling PineScript, go to the very first value in the array, which is zero. And what I want you to do is take it out. That's it. When we say array.shift, take out that value. Now let's say this is our array of values and we haven't added anything else to it. One is the first value in the array. If we use array.shift again, we're going to delete one. Now let's say we use array.shift again, we're going to delete two. And this is how the array will just continue to remove elements out of it when we use the array.shift function. So let's go ahead and execute this code and see what happens. And we're not going to have anything on the chart here. Now remember earlier in the video we were plotting labels on the chart here with our label.new function, but we did not have this historical brackets code in there. And we were deleting labels as soon as they were plotted. That's the exact same thing that we're doing now, but what's with our array label.delete array.shift code. As soon as there is a new element put into the array, 
it's going to be immediately removed. Consequently, any element that's put in the array is immediately removed. This means that no elements can ever be in the array because as soon as they get in there, they are wiped out. So we can have no labels on the chart. Now what's important here is, and I read that uh, PineScript, maybe they do allow you to access the uh, historical values of an array. I'm not too sure, but this is generally not how we would remove an element from an array by using a hist um, by referencing its historical value or telling PineScript to reference its historical value. This might work now. I haven't tried it. It definitely did not used to work. So we're going to learn the way that always has worked. And this way that has always worked is generally how you're always going to be telling PineScript to go in your array and remove data from it. Accessing, trying to access the array's historical values. If that does work now, I'm not sure. I've heard it does. Uh, it's not going to work. Uh, I wouldn't expect that method to work in all instances. Now, another critical learning um, opportunity here is let's go ahead and move label.delete.array.shift above this line of code where we push a value into the array. So now we're telling the script in sequential order to first delete right, the label that's in the array and then push in a label in the array. Now let's click add to chart. And we're going to hit an error here and it says cannot call shift if array is empty. So remember, at the beginning of this video, we discussed if we're telling PineScript to go in an array and do something with some value in there, if the value is not there or it doesn't exist, we're going to get an error. That's exactly what happened here. Now, when we're not using arrays, this is not an issue, right? So let's go ahead and say label equals label dot new, and we're going to go ahead and put label dot delete on top. Okay, let's go ahead and run that. We're not going to get an error. In fact, the script is running exactly how we want it to. And actually, because now we're telling PineScript first to delete a label and then plot a new label, we don't have to access the historical values of the label like we did before. Despite this, let's go ahead and ghost code our label.new. So now we're telling PineScript delete a label, a label that doesn't exist, okay? We're telling PineScript to delete a label that does not exist. Now we're going to click add to chart. And uh, looks like we run into an issue here. So we'll just put line dot new. We'll say bar index close bar index close, right? Just an output. Let's click add to chart. Okay. So we're telling PineScript to delete a label that does not exist and we're getting no errors. But when we do that with the array, we get an error because there's no data in the array and we're telling PineScript to go in there and delete a value that doesn't exist. Not a problem when we don't use arrays. Okay. But when we do, we have to be more precise and accurate with that with the data that is in that array. Now, how do we circumvent this, right? Because even when we put label dot delete array dot shift label array second, so we're first pushing a label in the array and then deleting it. Even when we did that, right, we couldn't get anything to stick on the chart because we're deleting the label as soon as it's pushed into the array. So what we have to do here is create another if statement. If array.size, you're going to be using array.size function all the time, particularly when you do not know the size of your array. Remember, we don't know the size of the array right now because we did not assign it an initial quantity. So when we don't know the size of the array, of course, the computer knows the size of the array. So we have to tell the computer, hey, you know the size of the array. So whatever function you're going to perform, make sure it's being done within the number of indexes that are actually in the array. So let's go ahead and say if array.size, and this uh, function says, the explanation reads here, the function returns the number of elements in an array. So we're gonna say if array.size, and it wants an ID. That's just label array, that's all we have right now. If label array is greater than one, not 12, one. So if, label, if the size of label array is greater than one, Every time we put a label into our array here, that's going to increase the size of the array by one. So if we have 500 labels pushed into this array, then the array has 500 indexes in it with 500 data points. If we have two labels in the array, then the array size is two. 20 labels, the array size is 20. So we're saying if 
the size of the array is greater than one. If there is at least two labels in the array, then we need you to do something. So with this line of code, we're saying, hey, if there's more than two labels in this array, computer, I need you to do something, all right? No matter what it is, we're just saying if there's more than two labels in this array, PineScript, you need to do whatever I put on this next line of code. So we're gonna say, if there is more than two labels in our array, then we want to label.delete array.shift label array. Now remember, array.shift, it's gonna pull that first element in the array. In this case, the first element in the array is going to be the previous label, the label immediately before the most current label, because of that calculation and appending these labels to the array is going to start on the first bar. So we're gonna get a label here on the first bar, right? The array size will be one, absolutely nothing is going to happen in terms of deletion and removal. But on the second bar, we're gonna push another label into that array. That's gonna give us two label elements in the array. We're gonna have a label with the close price on the first bar, a label with the close price on the second bar. This is gonna kick in our if statement here. The computer's gonna look at this and say, hey, oh, the array size of label array is greater than one. There's two labels here. So what do you need me to do? And we're telling, and we are telling PineScript, hey, label.delete array.shift label array. So label.delete the first label in the array. That's all we're doing. So let's go ahead and run this code and we'll go ahead and speedily go to the front of our chart or the back, I guess, however you would call it. And boom, ex we can see exactly the result that we were hoping to achieve. We now have a label on only the most recent bar with its close price. And if we go ahead and run this on bar replay and click play, boom, we can see that we're getting a label on the most current bar and deleting the label right before every single time. And what's also cool here is you can come and experiment and say, well, hey, PineScript, instead of deleting an array that has whose size is greater than one, I want you only to delete an array whose size is greater than four. Go ahead and click add to chart. Now we'll have four labels on the chart with the close price of each bar. If we go ahead and do say 40, now we'll have 40 labels on the chart. And essentially to wrap this up, this is the easiest method to my perception at least to get comfortable with arrays and start incorporating them in your scripts. Instead of doing label.new or just line.new and creating a new line, Instead, create an array that can hold those values and then push those values in the array and then just delete them out when you don't need them anymore. You can do this quite easily every time you plot a line or label. Instead of just doing label.new like this, you just do array.push label.new. And then instead of coding label.delete, right, you just do label.delete array.shift label array. Of course, there's um, many ways to tell PineScript to access particular indexes, elements in an array. Array.shift is going to remove the first element. Array.pop is going to remove the most recent element. So remember, we had our array here with our values in it. We had one, two, three, four, five, and uh, maybe some other numbers. Array.shift, that's gonna get rid of that first element each and every time. So sequentially, we're going to get rid of one than two. Now when we utilize array.pop, okay, we're going to delete the last element in the array. The last element, okay, we're not counting backwards, meaning we're not counting five, four, three, two, one, here's the last element. Instead, we're counting from the first element in ascending order. So one, two, three, four, five. Five is the last element or the most recent element in an array. So when we do array.pop, we're instead going to delete the number five, which is the last element. If we do it again, we're going to delete number four, then number three, number two, and only that first element will remain to which then it will be deleted. And then we have no array. <laughs> so, and there's also the array.remove function, but we'll save that for another script. Can get tricky, even though the explanation is the most simple of any array explanation built in function on PineScript. Changes the contents of an array by removing the element. Most simple. It can get tricky when we're for looping through an array and then we remove an element in the array and then the array tries to for loop through the array again. So um, array.remove, even though it seems so simple, it is actually a more complex built-in function to use because you can run into a lot of errors when you're using it. 
incorrectly. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Please like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Make sure to check out my PineScript tutorial, and I will see you in the next video.